unlike the way we go about turning the bowl, um, it is easier to turn the inside of the cup or chalice and then turn the outside. Normally we turn a bowl on the outside and then work the inside. Um, and you leave all of this big because there's no way on earth you could make this stand and turn this poor little skinny thing. No, that's right. So there we go. Okay, I'm going to pass this around. This one I turned using the live center in here, just the live center. And when I'm all done, I would need to get in here with my little Dremel tool uh, and sand out the funky looking little piece that I've left. Uh, let me just pass that around. But, but yeah, talk first about hmm? the grain structure and the wood and stuff. Okay, but, um, the grain structure in this, this, this is hand grain turning. Yeah. Um, and it is off center of the pit because if you had the pith right in the center, you'd wind up with the weakest little goblet in the world. I'm sorry. Thanks. See? The joke's on me for But the pith me. is in that piece of wood. No. Uh, actually, it isn't in this one. Oh, it's not. Um, but if you were going to turn one out of a piece of wood, this it just happened to be a big piece of wood. Yeah. Um, if you were going to turn it in one, you'd just offset the pith a little bit so that it's not running down the middle of the stem. Yeah. There's one on the shelf. That does a good job of getting those little ridges out. Well, if I can get 
careful of it. Raise your hand. Um, now, for what it's worth, really sharp. For what it's worth, I'm accustomed to turning at the very end of my machine because I have a swing away thing for my yeah. tail stop. So I, I'm feeling really clumsy. <clears throat> my muscle memory is not serving me well. Now, I'm not going to make this innards really pretty because I'm trying to show you how to make one, not necessarily how to make a beautiful one. Yep. Okay. Now, this This is just a standard old live center that you're all used to, I, I guess. Yeah. Um, and this is another way to make a steady for your thing. And instead of sticking this in and leaving an ugly place that you got to fix, you can make up a, a doohickey to, to be a center. Now, and if you don't have to go to any special trouble to make it round. Golf ball. We used to use golf balls. Uh, still do. Still do and I have one except that your golf ball probably isn't quite big enough to. Yeah. Might be. Yeah, hold it in the center. Huh? Hold it in the center. <coughs> okay, but this, this gives it a nice support. Tennis ball. Uh, no, yeah, I was going to say a tennis ball using the uh, cone cup on that center, yeah. on the uh, center, a tennis ball to go in the cone cup and the yeah. goblet. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's any number of ways to, you've you got to make something to, to hold it steady for you. Yeah. And I normally use a face sheet. into the part that you've got to just keep checking to see how thick your thing is. And again, I did not make a very pretty inside, I just made an inside.
break any? Huh? Did you ever break any? No, and I've never cut through a thief. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Charlie, you were asking about jokes, and yeah. Bruce was telling us about don't lay your tools like so. Yeah. Well, I had a brand new spindle gouge that I left like that, and I started turning. You know, yeah. With my little rubber shoes on, you know, the little yeah. clogs or yeah. whatever yeah. they call those things. And it went down, of course, the heavy end went down and landed right on my foot. And I had trouble making it, you know, to plug it back up. Yeah. A couple of days later, I was in at uh, the uh, bone doctor. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, Dr. Wynn. And for something else, and I asked her if I'd really, could I have heard anything important in there? She looked at it. She said, did it get to the ceiling? Yeah. <laughs> so evidently you got a big, big doohickey there. Well, yeah, well, it's, you got a. Well, did it get to the ceiling? How, well, how many people oh, have? Okay. Uh, Pretty close. Uh, let's say reinforced shoes. Steel toe boots. Steel toe. Safety shoes. They're kind of clunky, as I but I don't wear them up for you. Hey, could you talk about the sequence to how, how you go to diameter <coughs> on that? Um, I noticed you're getting down fairly close to the transition. Uh, and I know you said you got support. That's the reason you leave it large. But talk about the importance of that if you would. Okay. Um, this is just structure to keep the thing from vibrating while you're working at the cup end. Yeah. And I started with the inside of the cup first and then worked the outside because I'm taking away support as I go down. Um, well, now I've, I've got a cup, I've got support, so now I'm just going to take a roughing gouge and get rid of some of this material because uh, it's not, it's not going to help us at this point. Hmm? 
you want the dust system on? Um, Do you want the dust system on? No, uh, I'm all done. done. The other one. Uh -uh. Hank? Hank? Yes. Go behind the screen on the wall if he wants the system. Oh, I see it. Yeah. 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 That's the air compressor. <laughs> All right, now you're ready to decide if you want little curly cues, do hickey thing with jigs. Um, that's up to your artistic license. Um, so what's your speed now? What's your speed now? Fast. 1800. 1800. Okay, I'm getting down to the smaller stuff and I can turn it off. There. here is to try to make this stem be all the same size all the way down. And I just made a little short start because if I did the whole thing it would right. wiggle and wobble. Using a ball gouge? Mm -hmm. <coughs> you want to talk about the, the whys of your the direction of your cut? You're always pushing against that headstock. You want to tell them why that's important? Um, I, I don't know that it is important. I think it is. Yeah. Okay. It, it's absolutely important. The reason why is because you still got the support of the wood. There, it's a structure thing that you were talking about. That's extremely important because if you start going the other way. Chances are, you're going to, you know, go through your uh, your spindle you've just been working on. That, that directional cut's very important on that. Okay, you're doing it right, man. There you are. Well, it's just down the line on my part. Now. I think so. <laughs> now. of sandpaper to try to get this nice and flat. 
That's good. Five is you always quit, Eddie. Put them all your hand, huh? <laughs> you think that's safe? No, go ahead. Oh, man. Charlie. Come on, let's, let's see if we can break something. Um, now, I've left a little groove here. And I think somebody keeps telling us about shear scraping. Well, if I had a no way lathe, I probably wouldn't leave these with grooves. Now you probably noticed I, I probably took a little bit too much length the last time and I started shaking when I was cutting.
Where's the switch for the sucker? Right there. sand it and make it super smooth. I just got the worst of the uglies all. Um, I'll have to dip it for that. Well, uh, Pete, the, uh, the base probably ought to be a little bigger or at least the same size as the top, right? Probably. More or less. Not, not too much smaller because that doesn't look right. Well, let's scrap this and start another. Well, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I just whacked off something. But yeah, that's proportional. That looks good. To me. That one there. Yeah. All right. All right.
Ну. Amazing. Amazing. Standard for the challenge? Beats me. Well, if this is a standard, then you guys got no problem beating this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's the way I would finish off the bottom. If I'd left a big nubby, I'd cut it off with a knife or a chisel and then use the sander. I would do a better job of finishing. What was that wood that you just used? Um, it's um, Bradford pear, and it's really dry Bradford pear, which, believe it or not, even though it cuts like butter when it's wet, uh, I found it to be pretty brittle and hard when it's dry. Yeah. Um, it, it is what it is. Um, nice job, Pete. Yeah. 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 Do you always use dryer wood for the 